It's recording, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey there guys, so I'm on a six hour trip to Edinburgh and then another hour trip to Dundee. Me and my friend Daniel here are going to the Fringe Festival and then a Dare to Play, Dare to Proto Play uh, festival in Dundee. So uh, check out some pictures in this review. Say hi. Hey. Hey there guys, my name is Simon and today I am reviewing the LG Nexus 5. I'm just going to jump straight in here and say that if you are after a high powered phone but on a bit of a budget, then I'd seriously recommend one of these phones. The Nexus 5 has been out for a small while now and they seem to sell out almost instantly because of the fan base behind them and the practicality of these phones. Not only that, but they're seriously cheap considering what they can do. So whilst I'm complimenting this phone, let's get down to the nitty gritty. The size of this phone seems to be very similar size to the Galaxy S2. So it's a decent size in your hand, as well as that it is quite lightweight, weighing at 130 grams. The screen is able to produce a full HD video with no hiccups at all, ranging in almost 5 inches and a 445 PPI. On top of that, it has Gorilla Glass 3, and I'll admit I've been using this Nexus 5 pretty roughly in my time of use for it. And there are some scratches on the screen, but nothing too major that would hinder the visuals whilst watching film or YouTube videos. As well as that, it comes with either 16 or 32 gigabyte of memory, but no ability to pop in an SD card anywhere because it is a sealed unit. Cosmetically, it isn't the most stunning looking phone on the market. You can either get it in white or black, which are the two most common colors I've seen with this phone. However, the internet also tells me that it comes in red too, so if you're after that color, you can do a little bit of ruffling around the internet. White seemingly has this plastic feel to it, whilst the black version has a more rubberized, uh, rubbered gripped back. So I guess you get to decide if you like your phone to slide or not. The camera at the back sticks out of the phone, but not by much, but it does feel like it does have the potential to get caught on objects which could cause some serious damage to the phone, especially if it's in a cramped environment. But if you're buying this phone for its looks, then you're buying this phone for the wrong reason. There are no third party apps from LG like you get with your Galaxy phones or your Sony phones. Everything here is as bare bones as you care to be. That means that you're more likely to actually have something nearer to the 16 gigabytes of storage rather than losing 6 gigabytes to it to all those Samsung magazine apps. As it is part of the Google Nexus line, albeit made by LG, it gets any Android updates first. Hot fixes and bugs normally roll out on these phones before any other brands and you get to reap the rewards of that. On top of that, LG and Google are looking after their customers by actually supporting the phone and debugging some of its faults rather than letting them go months and months down the line without a fix. A main problem I initially had was with the camera when I first tested it. It was nothing impressive at all and the autofocus would be off by miles, resulting in some dodgy looking pictures. They have since updated it and I can honestly say it's one of the better cameras I've seen in a smartphone today. And that is coming from an 8 megapixel camera in a market full of 30 megapixel cameras now. With that said, it most definitely still struggles in low light situations but it can still yield some great results if used properly. The front megapixel camera is nothing special however, 1.3 megapixels, but can't complain, it's just very standard. Video recording is also in Full HD which produces some great videos. However, the same cannot be said about the recording in them. The microphone seems to get overwhelmed the moment a little bit of extra noise comes into play, which is a shame if you want to record some stuff in the heat of the moment. Now I've said this phone was powerful and I meant it. I've had no problem running any of the latest apps so far, albeit I have none really to show in this video, but graphic intensive games like Despicable Me and Order of Chaos have run seamlessly smooth for me. My only complaint so far, like most phones, is that it gets exceptionally hot and when it does so it can cause the phone to crash the apps. Now for those of you who like the insides and who like the number crunch, this comes with the Qualcomm MSM 8974 chipset Snapdragon 800. What does that mean? Well, basically that consists of four crate 400 CPUs running at 2.3 gigahertz, which basically means its processors are going to be super quick for multitasking. And an Adreno 330 or 330 running at 450 megahertz, which is basically it saying that a few months ago that this graphics card was the bee's knees and is still being used in the Galaxy S5 today. It also has 2 gigabytes of RAM, which also helps this phone's super fast processors. In short, the last paragraph that I just said means that this phone is super quick, super fast, and super powerful, and contests with the Galaxy S5 in terms of raw power. There you have it. It's a beast of a phone for less of the money. 
I can't deny I'm really looking forward to seeing what the Nexus 6 will be able to produce. Again, if you are on a budget but want to have a decent phone, go with a Nexus. That's all from me, guys. If you want to go and check out the prices for the Nexus 5, then go on our website at www.webuy.com or pop into your local store for more details. Remember, we buy all of your old stuff for cash. Or if you're looking to exchange it for something else, we offer more value on our in-store voucher. Check back soon for another review. Oh, and uh, enjoy this terrible singing. Ain't loyal. These hoes ain't loyal.